Hi everybody, this is Erica with Look What's In My Hoop. I'm here with floss tube number 24. It is Sunday, April 7th, 2024, and I am so excited to be back. Thank you to all of my returning viewers who come back time after time, and welcome to anyone who has uh, stumbled across my video, my channel, and has um, is planning on watching this video. I hope you enjoy what you see. This is a channel all about cross stitch, and I have a lot to share. I had planned to do a video at the end of March. I did one early March, and then I was hoping to do another one just before Easter, but that didn't happen. So I'm here today. Definitely have a ton to share, so this will probably be another hour-long video. So grab your drink, grab a stitchy project, and I hope you enjoy what you see. So, um, let's see, March was really busy. We had two birthdays. My oldest and my youngest both had birthdays. Claire turned 13 and Haley, uh, my little one, turned six. She's on these videos sometimes, although she hasn't been in the last few. Um, she's upstairs right now with Claire playing Mario Kart and that was a much bigger draw than doing a video with mom. So I don't know if she'll make an appearance today either. And my middle daughter is currently at the barn with her horse, which we got a couple months ago. Um, I wanted to see if I can try to show you a picture of the horse. She was a rescue from a farm and she's about 20 years old. My daughter named her Gracie. But I'll tell you, I, I took riding lessons when I was a teenager, like 15, 16 years old for a couple of years and I really loved it. But the horse blood runs through my daughter's veins. She is addicted. She loves everything about it. And now when she asks for something, it's not for herself, it's for the horse. So she had a little bit of cash um, saved up and my husband drove her over to the tack shop yesterday and she bought a new bridle and a new harness. And so they are at the barn today. <laughs> this is Gracie with her new pink harness or bridle. I'm not sure what you call that. I don't even remember. And then um, there's my daughter putting the little booty things on the legs so that she doesn't get all the little prickers when she takes her riding. But So it's been a lot of um, <laughs> running around trying to manage all of the kids and all of the horses and the pets and life. So I'm happy to be back here today though. I hope everyone, if you celebrated Easter, I hope you had a wonderful Easter. We did, I we spent it with the family. My mom and my dad always put dinner on and quite a bit of family came. There's a new baby in the family. Oh, she's adorable. So I got to meet her for the first time. Um, my oldest brother's stepson and his wife, they have a two year old, but they, a little boy, and they had a baby girl Oh, middle to end of February. She was about five weeks old around Easter time. So adorable. You forget how tiny these little babies are. Okay. Anyways, let's get into the stitching. That's what we're here for, right? Not about my life. So I have quite a few finishes that I want to share. And the first up is uh, the Primitive Hair Pumpkin Pie. There's a sweet viewer who's messaged me back and forth a few times um, who brought this to my attention. And I this was a start sometime last year. I'm going to say maybe around the fall. I'm not sure exactly, but it's not a difficult pattern. I'm, it took me a while to finish it, but I was so close. And I know it's not the fall season, but I want to get it done so I can get it FFO'd by fall. But that's the pattern. I don't know where to put anything. My table is full. Oh my gosh, excuse me while I move a chair over so I can <laughs> make room. And this was stitched one over one on 36 count farm eggs by X Shoe Design. And this is my finish. It's so cute. And I, I don't know, I'm making the assumption that this is a real recipe that you could actually use to make a pumpkin pie. So, love this. I really liked this fabric for this pattern because when you know, when you sprinkle a little cinnamon onto pie crust, it kind of gives it that little splotchy effect. Um, so I love it for this. And I do have a finishing idea 
for this. You know, as I found, I have some FFOs that I'm going to show you. And it is difficult finishing outside of the season because it's a little bit harder to find um, little accessories or the color ribbon that you need or um, floral stuff to coordinate <laughs> with the piece. So I may have to wait till, I don't know, end of August, usually September is when the fall stuff starts coming out. So maybe I'll be able to FFO it then. The next piece that I wanted to, I showed this last month. This was a new market release that I started, Happy Easter by Brenda Gervais. And I'm pretty sure I showed this in my last video. And I did finish this. I mean, I don't totally love my fully finish, but we're going with it. Um, is that fuzz? Oh, it is. <laughs> so this is my finish. I just stitched it into a sweet little pillow. I talked about this in my last video. I used Katie Wood So Tattered's little tutorial for the chenille. And again, my edges are not roughed up yet because I just haven't taken the time to really do it. But it'll, um, every time I go by and I, I do this, eventually it'll get the little ruffled edge that I'm looking for. Uh, it's really sweet. Stitch this one over one with the called for colors. And this was a fabric called In the Pink. I want to say it's by r, &R Reproductions. I'm not 100% sure, but uh, my last video, uh, you could zoom through and, and find it, and I list it there. But I love that. I set that out for the holiday season. And, you know, Easter was so, it felt so early because it was at the end of March that I'm actually keeping my Easter and spring stuff up for a few more weeks um to enjoy so that's a finish let's see i also finished and ffo'd this pattern january by the prairie schooler i did the big chart here i am planning on stitching this but when i stitch this one i think i'm going to do Lori holt has a color conversion with dmc threads which is what i used for this but I think I'm going to try her color conversion and uh, frame this little piece. But I'm not going to do that until probably winter because I'm kind of over stitching this one <laughs> right now. But I did FFO it. Now, my finish is very, very simple. I tried a bunch of different things. And I don't know, the more I added to it, the more I just became unhappy with it. So I did put it on this little sled that I found last year um, at a little, actually when we got our Christmas tree, there's a place right up the road, it's adorable, this little um, like Colonial Farm, Col Colonial Farmhouse with a barn, and they have a little shop there and trees of course that you can cut down. Uh, so I just picked this up, it's really cute. But anyways, this is my finish. I did do two over two DMC threads, and this is a 32 count antique white Lugana. The only thing I did do, I'm sorry, my nose always itches when I start these videos. The only thing I did different was I did outline the snowball because you could not see it. And at one point I had talked about maybe not putting this bottom row in, and I'm so glad that I did because I love it. Oh, fuzz or glue, I'm not sure. <laughs> um, I may, when the season rolls around and I can get it, I may stick a little bit of greenery in here just to kind of brighten it up. But I had put this, um, I had another uh, piece of fabric, a fabric board underneath this. I tried putting rick rack around it. I tried putting this little snowball trim. I didn't like any of it. I didn't. I just, I don't know. I just want something really simple. Oh, I'm happy to have that done though. Like I said, I might put a little greenery in when I can get my hands on some decent greenery for the season. Um, I don't have anything left over from when I did finishes last Christmas, so I'll kind of have to wait for that. And then my next finish that I did is, oh, I didn't pull out the 
pattern for this, but it's Lizzie Kate Dear Santa, I believe is the name of it. Um, but it's this little, and I showed this when I finished it a few videos ago. <clears throat> but what I did was I found this little stand at a garage sale a year or so ago. And actually the back side of it is this little clip. Um, and this side was a chalkboard. But I said, oh, you know, I could probably use this for finishing. So I just finished this on some sticky board. I put the trim around it. I put this bow at the top. I don't love my bows, but that's okay. We're going with it. Ribbon I just found at either, I think this was at Hobby Lobby. Um, this is stitched on 32 count, two over two with the called for colors, which were over dyes. I'm not sure the name of the fabric, I don't remember. But then this little pillow here, um, I did the Sew Tattered um, tutorial with some fabric. I glued these little ribbon tails because I liked it hanging down from the front. So this will, um, the edges will, again, over time they'll fray and look a little more frayed. But then I added this little pen with a, oops, 25, which I'll show you. I saw these on Nicole Spores video, one of her finishes, and I just thought they were really sweet. So I added that. And once I can find some little jingle balls or maybe some little beads, I might throw something else on there too. And initially I had this just kind of dangling down and it drove me crazy because it was just flopping all over the place. So I ended up gluing it but I may actually take it off and just glue the pillow in the corner because this kind of bugs me. I'm not sure, I'll have to play around with it. But it's cute, I think. You know, I've talked about this a million times, finishing is, I, I don't love it. I like having the piece finished, but I don't love actually doing it. So for me to finish is, it's a big deal. <laughs> it's a big deal for me because I hate it so much. All right, so these are the pins and the little number tags that I used that Nicole had shown on her video. They're the Tim Holtz Ideology number tokens. I'm assuming there's one for every day of the month in here. So I don't know that I will ever use them all, but certainly things like the 31st, ooh, that would be cute for Halloween, or the 13th, actually, if you had a little spooky piece, um, the 14th for Valentine's Day, maybe the 4th for July 4th. I don't know. I could probably use several of them. And then these are the sweet little pins. They're called Loop Pins by Tim Holtz, Ideology. I ended up ordering these online, I think from Amazon, because I don't have a lot of time to go around shopping looking for things, so it's easier. It's just easier for me to order online. And that is all of the full finishes I have. I do want to show some prior finishes. Um, I did show this a couple videos ago. This is Heart and Hand. The Easter bird finished in a signed and numbered frame. It looks like he doesn't have an eyeball though, <laughs> right? That kind of bothers me, but it's an Algerian. Is that Algerian? I don't know what kind of stitch that is. It might be. Um, so up close you can tell that there's an eye there, but from far away you can't. It just looks like the fabric and it kind of bothers me, but I don't know what to do about it now because I really don't want to pull it out and I, it's not perfect in here, but it's good enough for me. So if you have an idea of what I could do or if you think it just looks okay, I don't know. So I love that. That'll stay up for a few more weeks. And I think I showed this one too on a prior video. This was uh, the... Hmm. Easter Lineup. I think it's called Easter Lineup by the Trilogy. Finished in a signed and numbered frame. I did talk about this on another video, but I figured I'd show it again since it's the season for spring. 
I did change out some of the colors with just what I had in stash. stash. I did use little beads for the eyes instead of French knots because the French knots kind of got a little wacky. I did not like that. I finished this last year and I had it displayed in a kind of a wooden lantern. This is Stacy Nash. Um, it's the Robin, but I forget the name. But I never liked the way this finished. Um, this I finished it because it's too close to the edge. So you can see parts of it. I kind of cut off the stitching. Um, I am going to restitch this. I do have a an idea, an idea um, with some of the Stacy Nash animals that I'm going to do. So she will get restitched, and I don't know. I'll probably give this to Haley to play with because I don't like it. See here, I don't know what happened there, but that drives me crazy. It just it looks terrible from far away. Not so bad. <laughs> when you look close at it, it's not so good. So. But it's a really sweet pattern, so if you haven't seen this, um, you can look for Stacy Nash's Animal Crackers. Oh, Jenny. I think her name's Jenny, the Robin. So, really sweet. I really enjoyed stitching her, although, you know, this is a lot of filling. It's easy, but I it just felt like I was never going to finish that dress. And now I'm going to end up doing it twice. <laughs> so that's okay. And then the last, uh, this was a prior finish for spring. This is Brenda Gervais Spring Fling. Um, I framed this myself, but I am thinking of taking this to a professional framer and having them tighten up. They, you know, they do a much better job than I do. And this piece was kind of big. I think I do okay with the smaller pieces, but the bigger ones, not so much. You can see the wrinkles. This was stitched on 32 count Ash Rose Lugana with the called for threads. And I think I did one over two. Oh no, I guess I did two over two. I have seen this in several lost tube videos lately because spring and people are showing their finishes. Um, somebody, and I can't remember who, stitched this as a like grayish brown bunny and I wish I thought of that because I loved it. And I don't particularly care for the white. So I won't refinish, I won't redo this one now. Because otherwise I like everything else about it. But I wish I'd seen that video before I stitched this because I, I would have completely copied that, that stitcher. So I love that. It's been fun to have these up for the holiday season, the spring season. And I love that that's, um, you know, definitely spring, it's got bunnies and it's got robins, but it's not necessarily just Easter. So you can leave it up for a few months, the spring season. And the other thing I wanted to show you, now this might be kind of hard to see, but I'm gonna try anyways. I finished this, it's a Bent Creek Row, let us be thankful. And I've shown this on a past video. And I stitched this on a very plain fabric. I don't even remember the name of it. It's probably a 32 count, two over two. And then I had purchased, I talked about this Instant Antique, antique Aging Solution. And I wanted to try that because I wanted to add, um, I don't know, I kind of wanted to just make the fabric a little more splotchy. So I did spray that antiquing spray. I sprayed a lot of it too. I took this outside, I had it on a piece of cardboard, I laid it down flat and I just sprayed it. And I kept saying it doesn't look any different. It doesn't look any different. And it really doesn't. But if you flip the fabric, you can kind of see, let me get to where maybe you can see it. This is lighter and this was the color of the fabric. The front and back were exactly the same. So. I don't know if you can even tell. It's slightly darker, but it did not do what I was hoping to do. it would do. I was hoping it would kind of make it, oh, like a little splotchy, kind of maybe like how the farm egg fabric is on the pumpkin pie piece that I just showed. But it didn't, and I, that's okay. I'm still gonna finish this. I have a really good idea how to finish this. Um, again, I'm just waiting for some fall florals and different things to start showing up in the stores, which will be a while because it's not even summer yet. 
<laughs> um, and in order to finish that though, I did buy the self stick, the mounting board, uh, the bigger boards, which I didn't have. And I'll be able to get several projects out of this. There's two in here, and um, this will last me for a little bit. But So if anyone has an idea what I can use maybe to antique this up a little bit more. I mean, it definitely did darken it, but it wasn't really quite the look I was going for. It's okay, though. If I can't find something, I'm just going to move forward. Um, and not dwell on it too much because I the idea that I have for finishing I really do think will come out really nice so it's not that big of a deal if I can't find something okay let's talk about works in progress so I am stitching the Scarlet House sampler for all seasons I've talked about this in every video for the last few months because I do have monthly goals and I had been keeping up with it until this month, <laughs> the month of March. I was supposed to finish the spring square, and I did not <clears throat> because it's busy and I made a mistake. So I am stitching this on 40 count Steinbeck. Don't mind my board, this is my little wool ironing board. <laughs> I don't have one of those nice project boards to show, but this is kind of getting bigger now, so I needed something to support it. So this is where I'm at. Don't mind this. This was my original start, and I messed up the counting, and I haven't taken it out yet, but I was supposed to stitch. Can everyone see? I was supposed to stitch this, the whole thing, and I didn't get the house finished. I stitched everything but the house. What is that? Oh, that's my needle. I was stitching on this this morning and I was working on the roof, um, which I didn't finish the roof either. But I made a mistake in the house and I have to frag it out, which if you look closely, you can maybe kind of see down here where I had it, I fragged a few rows here or over here, oh, there it is, it's in this corner. That bottom corner that you can see where I'm starting to frog it out, and there were some rows here. Um, I messed up the counting, somehow I did something wrong. Um, so I am taking it out and I'm redoing it. Now the hard part is that this is a 40 count fabric. Now I can see 40 count just fine if I have a really good light, which I always use a good light when I stitch. So I don't need magnification or anything, which I'm grateful for, but frogging on a 40 count, especially with this particular color, because it's close to the fabric color, is a little bit tricky. Um, so I kind of lost my mojo and I wanted to get those other things finished and FFO'd, so, but I am going to pick this back up and hopefully get this done and the next row of words is my April goal. So we'll see. There's no rush. If I'm late getting it done, then so be it. I didn't put myself on any kind of time frame for that. And then here are the called for threads. They're all classic color works. And again, this is on 40 count Steinbeck. I love this pattern so much. I just enjoy every single stitch of it. I do not enjoy the fragging, but I love it. And um, I'll definitely have this framed. I think I'm going to have to frog that square out down here, <clears throat> at least part of it, because I'll need to have a little bit of um, an edge so that the framer can frame it. It's so pretty. I really, really love working in that. So my project today, um, I'll only be working on this, and I'm hoping that I can get the roof done and get the rest of that house unfrogged, and maybe do a, a few words, the next row of words, got a couple words done. And the next whip that I have is Come Into My Garden by Blackbird Designs. When I talked about this last, I talked about how I had a piece of 36 count velt, it was a fat quarter, and I 
made a couple mistakes twice I had to frog out the border um, the first time I had to frog it out because I was too close to the edge so I frogged I frogged it I restarted it and then I was still too close to the border and I said oh my god I can't stand it I had um, another piece of 36 count belt and I said I'm just gonna start it over on, a, on that fabric and sometime down the road I will frog this all out and it'll be fine but I needed to start fresh so I pulled out that 36 count belt and I realized it was a half yard not a fat quarter and I was very grateful because I did not want to have to restitch this thing I've, I'd already done it twice um, so I stitched the whole border and then once the border was done, then I cut my fabric down so that I would be sure I had enough room. So I did the border and I did, you'll see a couple of the flowers at the top. And then I, I cut my fabric and I did serge the edges. There's my border. And you can see I started, I, there is a mistake though. Um, I'm not gonna point out where it is. <laughs> there was a uh, sweet viewer that left a comment in my last video. I had talked about some kind of mistake. I think it was a mistake in my heart and hand project. And she said, if you can't see it from a galloping horse, don't worry about it. And boy, is she right, it's so true. So why I fret about these mistakes, I don't know. It's not worth it. So there is a mistake in the border. I was able to make it work and I didn't frag it again. <laughs> That's not true. I had to frag maybe eight or nine stitches and I, I figured it out. But I started working on those two flowers in the upper corner and there is an inner border, but as I'm doing the flowers, I'm just gonna stitch that border. I thought about maybe going around the whole thing and just getting it done. But this inner border, there are some color changes in a few spots, so I decided I'm just going to do it as I go. I know the lighting is not the best here today. It's probably the closest. I really enjoy working on this. Um, oh, where's my threads? Let me show you the threads. I don't have a time frame to get this done. I do plan on working on it kind of regularly. Um, this lately has been my Saturday stitch and then the sampler for all seasons has been my Sunday stitch. But who knows? I mean, there's a lot of things I wanna stitch. So weak style works. There's a lot of colors in here. Um, really pretty though. And I love this velt fabric. I already have a couple other projects in mind to use up the rest of the fabric that I have. It's really pretty, really nice to stitch on. I'm pretty sure it's by, it is, it's by Picture of This Plus, 36 count velt. Really fun. So that was a new start this year and I love that. Um, so let's see, the January that I showed you by Prairie Schooler was a new start this year. So it's nice to get a, new, uh, a start and a finish all in the same year. I didn't know people could do that. You can do that. <laughs> Kidding. So I pulled out um, an old whip. I have a list. There's 19 of my old whips that I carried over. That's a lot. I've already finished a few of them. I think three I finished. And I just pick one a month, or I pick one, and then I kind of work on it until it's done. And I felt in the mood to pick this up. It's Leisure Arts Seasonal Scenes. Um, this is quite old, but I was able to find this on eBay, and you can find it on the secondary markets. And I started with the fall one. That's probably not a shocker for those of you that have been here. You know, it's my favorite, favorite season ever. But I do want to stitch all of them. The only thing I don't love is this bonnet. Um, I love the watermelon, but the bonnet to me um, does look very dated, right? 
eighties, nineties. Nineteen ninety three was when this was printed. Um, so I don't know if I would be able to. It would be a lot. Oh God! But I would love to have a pitcher or a vase or you know something else besides the watermelon there. Um, maybe if I get ambitious. But I'm going to stitch the fall one, and I'm definitely going to stitch the winter one, and then we will see. I would love to have all four done because I have a spot in my kitchen. I think this would be really sweet. So I pulled that back out. I am stitching it on 32 count bramble, and it's in the hoop because I've been working on it the last couple of days a little bit, so I didn't want to take it out. I might even work a little bit more on it today. Um, but I started, I did a fair chunk of the house here and the shutter and the windows and I want to get this done. So this is the top of the pattern. So I just want to get this section here complete and do some back stitching because there is a little bit of back stitching. Um, and then I'll work on this one next and then I'll do this one and then I'll work along the bottom. That's my plan. And you can see there's, um, half stitches. Oh, did I miss a stitch? Oh. oh, I did. Oh, no, I didn't. It's so light. You can't hardly see it. <laughs> Looked like a missed stitch. Um, isn't that funny how you don't see it until you're staring at it like in a mirror or <laughs> on the screen? These, uh, these are definitely missed stitches. There's some red uh, that goes in there. Um, that's but from far away, I love it. Really pretty. That's been a lot of fun. I don't mind back stitching. I'm just gonna kind of do it as I go. I don't think I'd like to wait till the end and then do all the back stitching because that would seem a little bit torturous for me. So I won't do that. And it's all DMC threads. <laughs> Big pile of DMC threads. I swear this year is my year to get my DMCs organized so that they're actually functional for me but not yet okay and then what did I work on oh I gotta get going okay then I pulled out this um, Brenda Gervais sampler of the season winter I have all four seasons this was the first one that I started love these so much I love them I love them I love them and I'm stitching it on 36 count saltbush by Fox and Rabbit. And you can see, I've shown this a few times before, um, my progress here. And I think I am going to start over. I know, all the hours, that, it's a lot of hours, but I don't love, I love this fabric, I love the color of it. I do not, I mean, I really hate, hate, hate how my white stitches look. Now, whatever reason it is, white is always hard to stitch with, I find. Um, sometimes it looks great, certain fabrics it doesn't. And I um, really do not, I'll show you, I, it's embarrassing, but I'm going to show you how awful my white stitches look. Um, and I even thought about, okay, rather than, you know, Maybe I can take this part out and not even worry about, you know, just do maybe a couple of rows of the white. And then I started comparing that to the other three patterns and I have to do it for all of them. And the other three patterns have some really cute things. I think there's pumpkins, one of them has some animals. I don't wanna give that up. But I am going to put these all together on the wall when it's all done. So I have to do the white stitching and I'm not happy with my white stitching. So it's terrible. I mean, look, it just, these stitches I don't like and the stitches in here. Um, I mean, normally, not always, but usually my stitches look pretty nice, I, I think. And it just doesn't, I don't like it. So I actually ordered um, new fabric and I'm going to start this over and I will, I will not frog this out. It's just going to get cut up and thrown in the trash. Unless maybe someone wants it to finish it. If someone is interested, I 
could probably cut the piece and send it to you and you can frog out all that terrible white stitching and make it look nicer. Um, let me know if you're interested. But I'm gonna try that. I'm gonna try it on the new fabric first to make sure I really do like it. Um, and I decided that I am going to stitch it on 40 count instead. And I'm going to stitch it on um, Steinbeck, which is what I'm stitching, stitching this on. So this is the Steinbeck. This is Saltbush. So you can see there's color difference. This is a little more gray. And um, where'd my threads go? So these are all of the called for threads for Winter Sampler. And I think it will look nice on Steinbeck. I'll show you here in a minute, maybe. Um, so awkward, I can't, so awkward, I can't hold all this. Um, I don't know, kind of give you an idea. So I love that pattern so much that I have made peace in my heart with starting over because I, I want to enjoy it. I really want to enjoy it. And um, the white is just not doing it for me. So it'll be a new start. But then I was thinking, okay, well, the fabric hasn't come yet. So um, when it comes, do I want to start with winter or do I maybe want to start with the summer one because summer's coming up or fall and maybe have the fall one done by fall. So I might not actually start with the winter. But what I am gonna do is stitch a few rows of white on the new fabric just to make sure that I actually do really like it before I go through all that work. Um, okay, so I have a couple new starts that I wanna show and I have a lot of haul market and I have no self-control sometimes. And then I have the giveaway from the last video. So I'll try to make this quick. Um, this is a PDF pattern I bought online from Needle Treasures Nook. I think actually it was Etsy. And it's Lucky Charm Harmony. And I started this before St. Patrick's Day, the beginning of March. I was hoping to maybe get it done, but I didn't. And I kind of lost, I don't know, between everything we had going on. And then, like I said, I really wanted to finish those other pattern or the pumpkin pie I wanted to get done, the January I wanted to get done. I wanted to get the Brenda Gervais bunny pillow done. So this kind of took a little back seat. But I'm stitching it on 32 count buttercream, two over two. And I got one clover done. And it does called for, um, it does call for, I can't even talk, grape leaf, which I had, and dried thyme, which I also had. So these are the greens. And then I picked um, black coffee for the ladybug. And I had picked baked apple, which would be okay, but then I think I want, um, I was stitching on my sampler for all seasons and I found, let me see if I can find it quick. Oh, here. I might do cherry cobbler instead. So that's barn door. This is cherry cobbler. I'm not sure. Barn door is definitely more muted. This is a little brighter. I don't know, maybe I'll stick with barn door. This is why I don't do colors outside of what the designer tells you because it's too many options for my little brain to handle. But I do love this and um, I'm going to start taking this to work. So if I get a lunch break, I don't usually get a lunch break, but if I do, I will stitch. 
I know you have to take a lunch break, and I should, but it's so busy that oftentimes I will eat and work through lunch, but then I'll sneak out early at the end of the day, and I'd rather have the time at the end of the day, and my boss doesn't care, so <laughs> that's usually how it goes. Okay, so that was a new start. Um, clearly, I didn't get it done by St. Patty's Day, but maybe for next year. Now, this was a project I've had kitted up for a while. I'm sure these are very popular, but I love them. I'm really into Blackbird. I don't know that I've stitched um, a Blackbird design before. I have to go back and look. I can't think of one. I have several of their patterns, but I've never stitched them. So I am starting with Summer. This is Loose Feathers Summer, part one. And then there is Autumn and winter and when it's all done if you stitch them all together it will look like this and i am also stitching this on 40 count steinbeck with all of the called for threads which are beautiful and it's in my hoop with a thread hanging down because I was working on this on Friday and I want to put in a couple more rows today. So there's the threads. I really love this fabric Steinbeck. It's so pretty. Um, just stitching one over one and kind of see through the back of it. Let me go like this. It's very neutral, grayish, gray brown kind of color. Really pretty. And you know, 40 count, I'll get close so you can see the holes. It's not so bad. Well, look how tiny those stitches are. Oh, love it. Um, I really enjoy this too. So I don't know why I didn't start it sooner. Um, keeping it in this sweet little project bag. I think this was from Joanna, 1966 on Etsy. I'm not 100% sure. Um, but this was my birthday present to myself last. I'm sorry, my husband just pulled in the driveway, so my dog is freaking out because he doesn't know who it is. <laughs> um, sorry, you're going to hear a little bit of noise and commotion. So that was my second start for the month, um, and that's okay. That's a lot. Hi, your horse looks beautiful, honey. Was she happy? Good. I'm doing a video, so I'm going to, okay. Um, so let's see, haul. So this was my fabric from Be Stitch Me. I belong to the 36 count club gold rush. Really pretty. And as soon as I opened this up, I had a couple of ideas for some fall pieces, but I need your help in helping me choose. So I was thinking Midnight Watch. And I meant to pull uh, some of the colors for this. Oh, why do I always get this little split here? Um, I meant to pull some of the colors for this if I had them to hold it up against the fabric, but uh, I didn't. So I don't know. What do you think? I think it would really pop. I may have to change around some colors. I don't know. But I think the house would look really nice. Of course, the moon and the cat would look beautiful. The only thing I worry about are the oranges on this. Um, so that's option one, or Prairie Spooler Autumn Leaves is option two. Same thing though, I'd have to be really careful with the oranges. Um, I don't know. I love both of those patterns. Okay, so that's option two. Or my third potential, um, and this would all depend on the orange, again, is the drawn thread that's in the belfry. So. Oh, that might look nice. I might even be able to get a couple of these. Oh. Um, I might be able to get the Prairie Schooler and Bats in the Belfry on this. I'm not sure how big this is when it's finished. It's eight by 14. 
on 30 count and this is 32 count so I could probably get two projects um, so I guess tell me which two do you think would look best help me decide I'm kind of leaning towards at least the Prairie Schooler one. And I don't know. I, you know, I don't know. I really can't make up my mind, so help me. So that was from the Stitch Me. Really pretty fabric. And then a few videos ago, I had talked about how I really love crows. So I've decided to stitch all the crow things that I can this year. And this is a Mill Hill button and beads. Autumn series, Ravens. So I do currently have a button and beads um, kit for fall. It's called Midnight Farm. And I do want to finish that. So I may um, start this one after that one's done. But I love that. Then from the market, we have Ellen Carr. I want to make this for a friend. It says, remember well and bear in mind, a faithful friend is hard to find. This is from Needlework Press. And these are the color work threads, <clears throat> most of which I had. I think I had to get the blues. I don't really have anything to hold this up against, so I'm sorry. Um, really pretty. I didn't pick a fabric out from my stash yet, but um, I will. So this was an antique sampler. I'm assuming it's that one in the middle. Um, and this is without the verse, it looks like. And then with the verse, which I love. So, pretty, pretty. Then, uh, Grace Notes Fabric. I got the first fabric in the Fabric of the Month Club. I decided to do the 40 count linen. And this is Spring Breeze. Really pretty minty green. Um, I can definitely see some spring pieces on this. And I love stitching, how, uh, not Halloween, Christmas pieces on mint. So definitely some options there. I would like to pick something soon and actually start stitching on this fabric to make sure I like it, but it feels really nice. So I think I have an Easter piece I can put on that. I should look. Okay, another curl pattern. Cherry Picker by La Dida. Um, I'm planning on starting this on one of my summer vacations. I don't know, I think it'd be just a good summer stitch. Oh, it uses needlepoint silk. Oh, I've never used needlepoint silk. Hmm. Or DMC. Or I could pick, uh, some over guides, but I love that. Then this isn't from Market, but I, I really like the Scarlet House. Scarlet Berries. Again, with these little birds. And peacocks, are those peacocks? And a rabbit, I'm assuming, I'm not sure what that is. And a cat, or a dog, I don't know. Take your pick. But I really like the colors on this. Um, yeah, I have so many patterns. I don't know when that one will be started. Um, so also from Market, I picked up the Animal Cracker series Maggie Mae. So sweet. This is pretty popular. I've seen a lot of people how can you not love these animal crackers? And then I picked up Miss Hazel. She's so pretty. She reminds me of a school teacher. I don't know why, but like the old <laughs> 1800 school teacher. But you know, she's a squirrel, so. 
And I didn't get the mouse one, but I'm kind of kicking myself. I wish I had picked up this home sweet home. And I love the border around this. Um, I'm not too fond of the purple sweet. I would maybe change that to something that was a bluish purple, like indigo, not indigo, it's dark, violet maybe. Um, something that isn't, well, you know, I would pull this thread first and just see what it looked like. But if it's too purple, I wouldn't like that. So I'll pick um, like a bluish purple. I don't know. I may never stitch it. I have so many patterns. I don't know why I keep buying. Um, I picked up the next series in the barn calendar by Twin Peak Primitives. So they started in February. Now, and I talked about this, I don't like what's in the center, right? I don't want to, like there's one barn that I like, but I'm actually going to stitch um, like a salt box house. And I found so many free patterns online, especially from her name again oh it's terrible anyways there's a ton of free salt boxes and I'm going to put those in and I might still do things like the birds or I might incorporate some tulips but the reason I love these patterns it's because of these borders are absolutely stunning so I have to pick one. Ooh, maybe where did I just throw it? Maybe I will put this on that um, Grace Notes fabric that I literally just had and now I cannot find because it's such a massive mess when I, oh, here it is. <laughs> um, I'll pull the colors, but maybe I will stitch this on this. I might do that. And then I'll find a salt box. I've started saving. Um, oh, this is this uses DMC, so there's a good chance I have a lot of those colors already. But and then I'll see if I even like the fabric and if the salt box house is going to work. But oh, those arches just love them, love them. So May, I'll have to get May. Now the couple things I purchased since the last video were these uh, Threadwork Primitives. It's, it's the Beggars series. And um, I searched, and I don't know where I saw these. I saw somebody stitch them and I searched all over and I thought they had them for every month, but I can only find five of them. And does, so does anyone know anything about these? Did they make them for all 12 months? Or did they only do certain months and that's all you can get? I'm not sure. But the reason I got them was, of course, because of the crow. So, beggars forth. This will be a start in May for me. And beggars valentines. And even when I do a search for these, these are the only months I can find. That's why I'm wondering, um, what is this, March? The only thing I don't like is the hole in that bowl. I'm going to have to reconfigure that or do a different kind of vessel. I don't like that. Um, October. Lovely. And Christmas. December. Um, so does anybody know, do they do these for the rest of the month? And can you find them anywhere? Or is this it? Which, if that's it, that's okay. I love, I love these. Um, I do have a, well, I have a handful of May projects that I want to start, but I need to whittle it down because I don't want a ton of new starts this year, especially as I'm trying to whittle down my starts from last year. Um, but I'm definitely going to start this one. And I think I will, um... Pick my own colors. Looks like it uses Classic Color Works Black Coffee. That must be for the bird. And Cayenne. And then Freedom and Flax. But I will do my own red and my own blue. Um, and I think I have Flax and Black Coffee. But I'm going to start that. 
cute. Okay, and then my last thing I want to go over is um, this was a freebie that was sent to me when I ordered some buttons that took a few months to get here. Teresa with the kitten stitcher was really nice. Um, she was great um, about keeping in contact with me regarding when the buttons were going to come in. Um, but she sent me this as a freebie and I love it, but I won't stitch it. So I wanted to give this away. And the winner of that is Mary Lee Laird 8708. So Mary, I'm oh sorry for the glare. Mary, if you could email me your address, I will get this out in the mail to you. And congratulations. Okay, so that is all I have for this video. Let me know. There's two big things I need to know. Um, what pattern or patterns, I think I could fit two, I should, I should stitch on the Be Stitch Me Gold Rush fabric. And I'm really curious to know about these. If there's other months, if they just didn't do them, I don't know. I love them. So let me know. Um, I don't know. Hopefully I'll be back in a few weeks with another video. But until then, happy stitching and happy spring. Thank you.